Author Jerome Corsi has become a central figure in Robert Mueller's Russia collusion probe as Mueller continues to imply that Corsi was somehow linked to the WikiLeaks release of Hillary Clinton's emails. But what really happened here? Well, to help answer that, I want to welcome in former federal prosecutor and the founder of Freedom Watch, Larry Klayman. He's also representing Corsi in a lawsuit against Robert Mueller and his office. Larry, great to see you. You too, John. How are you? All right. So there was some activity today with regards to the grand jury. Larry, what's going on? Fill us in. A lot of moving parts. Corsi is a subject of the investigation. His stepson apparently was called in to testify. Give us the latest. Tell us where things stand now and what you expect. That's correct. It's uh, Andrew Stetner is Dr. Corsi's stepson. I'm representing him and Dr. Corsi before the Mueller grand jury as well, in addition to the lawsuits that we brought for alleged prosecutorial misconduct. But he testified, and really that was very short. It was unnecessary that he be brought here. Uh, I think it was just trying to show the force of the special counsel, pushing back a little bit. But Andrew simply testified that no documents were destroyed. Uh, there was no other testimony, nothing with regard to Roger Stone or anything like that. It was relatively short, and we left and we went home. And I was asked a question outside of the courthouse if I thought that Dr. Corsi would be indicted. And I don't think he will be. I don't think that would be very wise on part of the special counsel who we allege, and Jerry has uh, obviously knowledge, was asked to lie unless uh, otherwise be indicted. If, asked him to lie under oath to use testimony against the president of the United States. So, so, so I trust that the special counsel will be smart and go away. Well, Larry, who at this point, who is the ultimate target of Robert Mueller? Is it Donald Trump, in your professional opinion? Well, it's clearly Donald Trump. Yes, they want Donald Trump's head on a on a platter. And they're using whatever means they can to gather the information to do that. Uh, Jerry is just caught between a rock and a hard place, Dr. Corsi, and he's been victimized by this whole thing, as have others who have appeared before this grand jury, including Andrew Stetner, the poor kid in the last two weeks, was just terrified. He lost 18 pounds wow. thinking about this testimony. And it's, it's just a terrible experience to have to go through it. And our federal government has become so oppressive generally. Just yesterday, John, in another case, the Cliven Bundy case, where we won in district court in Las Vegas, Nevada, there was unbelievable prosecutorial misconduct there, suborning of perjury, suppression of evidence, exculpatory evidence. A whistleblower came forward. The Bundys had a target list on their heads, a kill list. The government, so-called government, our Justice Department, continued with the appeal. They say they're going forward with it. Now, remember, this is the so-called Trump Justice Department. If you want to read about this, go to Cliven Bundy Defense Fund. Larry, let me remind the viewers uh, of who The president's Cliven not in control of it. Let me remind the viewers of who Cliven Bundy and his sons are. Bundy is a, is a landowner, and the landowner, a rancher in the state of Nevada. He got into a dispute over grazing rights with the Bureau of Land Management, and they essentially started sending SWAT teams after this guy, federal SWAT teams after this guy and his family. But ultimately, it was found, as you mentioned, that there was quite a bit of prosecutorial misconduct. Briefly explain what happened in that case and how the Bundys ultimately prevailed and why the government is now continuing the prosecution. Thanks, John. The reason I say this is the heavy handedness of the Justice Department. It's not in control by the president himself. It's out of control. It's this deep state. But the Bundys had ranched this land for 150 years. Uh, the grandfather of Cliven began the ranch. The government demanded money, claimed that they owned the land. The land belongs to the people of Nevada, not the federal government, right. by virtue of exchange of title. And the Bundys were threatened to get off the land when Cliven decided he didn't think he had to pay grazing fees because they weren't due to the federal government. And to have the Bureau of Land Management come in would have been to put him out of business as it has hundreds of ranchers throughout the West. So they sent in these goons, sharpshooters, if you can believe it. Uh, they sent in others, mercenary uh, cowboys, threatened his life and the life of his family. They assaulted his sister, Margaret. They tased his sons. They killed many of the bulls in his, hort, in his herd, buried them in a secret mass grave. And people around the country saw this because it was being televised on Fox News and elsewhere. And they came on horseback and they came exercising their Second Amendment rights. Nobody harmed a hair on the head of anyone. The Bundys didn't even carry arms, but they were later indicted for threatening federal officers and obstruction of justice. And the jury didn't buy it in the first two trials. 
where other defendants were being tried. Right. And then in the last trial, uh, the government got caught lying and hiding evidence and actually threatening a whistleblower, Larry Wooten, who came forward revealing that there was a kill list on the Bundy's head. So wow. for the government to take an appeal for this Justice Department is an unbelievable outrage. And similar things are happening in this Mueller grand jury investigation. We have no Department of Justice. It's become a Department of Injustice. All right. Let's talk about President Trump, uh, his role in the investigation as it pertains to his lawyer, Michael Cohen. Now, CNN is reporting that the Senate Intelligence Committee subpoenaed Cohen to testify sometime in the middle of next month. Cohen is claiming he has concerns. He's claiming the president threatened him and his family. And that's why he postponed his testimony before the House next month. Well, the Senate subpoenaing him now. So it's left to be seen if he's going to testify before the Senate. President Trump, though, took a jab at Cohen today on Twitter. He tweeted, quote, so interesting that bad lawyer Michael Cohen, who sadly will not be testifying before Congress, is using the lawyer of crooked Hillary Clinton to represent him. Gee, how did that happen? Remember July 4th weekend when crooked, meaning Hillary, went before FBI and wasn't sworn in? No tape, nothing. And the president said yesterday that he's never threatened Cohen. Listen to this. No, I would say he's been threatened by the truth. He's only been threatened by the truth. And uh, uh, he doesn't want to do that probably for me or other of his clients. Uh, he has other clients also, I assume. And uh, he doesn't want to tell the truth for me or other of his clients. OK, thank you very much. Now, the lawyer Trump is talking about is Lanny Davis, longtime associate and attorney for the Clintons. You've said many times here on this program that you believe Larry Klayman is doing a horrible uh, that I'm sorry, Lanny Davis, Larry, is doing a horrible <laughs> job of representing Michael Cohen, that he's really representing interests in the Democratic Party and not his client. That's right, John. He sold his client out down the river. He didn't even get him a cooperation agreement, didn't get him a good plea deal. He was more intent on harming the president of the United States. And I can assure you that when Hillary Clinton declare, declares for the presidency in 2020, Lanny's going to be one of her big backers. Now, to call him Lanny doesn't mean he's my friend. I've sued him. He's a very dishonest lawyer, one of the worst in Washington, D.C., and the president's absolutely right. And I don't believe the president did threaten Michael Cohen's family. He simply pointed out, uh, according to him, that Michael Cohen's father is, has mafioso ties, apparently, and he's opening up a can of worms here. Yeah, I don't think there were threats. I mean, the president's not going to threaten a guy who's cooperating with the special counsel. I think it's all ridiculous. And personally, Larry, we don't yeah. have much time left. I think Cohen postponed his testimony because he's either going to have to admit he lied or perjure himself. And I think that's why he doesn't want to go before Congress. But we're going to definitely have you back on to discuss more. Larry Clayman, always great to see you, my friend. Thanks. Thank you, John. Same. God bless.